Hello, good afternoon, Michael Wynn, Chief Digital Officer of Digital Ops, a division of RB Oppenheim Associates. Thank you guys for joining me today on the digital marketing podcast and video series where we talk about digital strategies to help grow your business. Today, I'm gonna to talk about eight questions to ask when looking for a web design agency. Um, you know, this, this is actually really inspired by a conversation we had yesterday with a potential client who is looking to have their website redesigned. Um, you know, they have a pretty, um, pretty robust website right now, uh, a little over 100 pages on their existing site. Um, and so I think, um, you know, they had a lot of great questions. And so I think for, if you're a small business or an organization or an association and you're thinking about redoing your website, maybe it's been, um, you know, since 2014 or 15, you know, since you've redone your site. Uh, and it's very possible that if you did your site in 2014, it was not built on a responsive platform, meaning it's not mobile optimized. So uh, that, that's the number one reason why you would probably want to really look at, uh, you know, redoing your website because we know with digital marketing, if, if we're going to leverage underpriced attention on uh, Facebook and, and Instagram, as well as uh, LinkedIn organic content, um, you know, having a mobile optimized platform because we're gonna lead people from a conversation or content engagement from those platforms on their, on their phone to the landing page of your website um, that's why your website is such an important part of the overall digital marketing strategy. So let's jump right into it. Number one, uh, what content management system are you going to pick? And we've done uh, a couple of episodes on this, but briefly, uh, you know, I, I think uh, WordPress hands down runs 33% of the world wide web. Um, probably one of the most flexible and adaptable content management systems on the platform. So a, you're going to ask that agency, what content management system do you build on and can you tell me why? Um, you know, I think from our standpoint, we have, you know, selected WordPress because of, you know, its scalability um, and its flexibility to adapt to whatever our needs are. So let's assume you're going to go down that path. Um, the next thing would be Number two, are you gonna build my site from scratch or are you gonna build my site from a template or framework? You know, I think a lot of people think that if you're gonna build a WordPress site and, you're, and, and in order to build a site, you have to pick a theme, you have to pick a framework in order to build on it, whether you pick one from the free repository, um, you know, sort of the store, if you will, from WordPress and, and all of their themes there are free. Um, but you get what you pay for, you know. Um, you know, there are a lot of free themes that are available. Problem is, some of them um, are abandoned very quickly, and if they are abandoned, you're going to open yourself up to vulnerabilities in your code and potentially see your site compromised, either with malicious code, um, you know, or just completely hijacked altogether. Uh, so again, asking that question is important. If they say, yes, we're going to use a theme, then sort of the sub question of that is, okay, is it a premium theme? And in this, is there a license for that theme? And will we as a company own that license um, moving forward? So that's a question you wanna know um, because with that license comes updates and renewals. Again, security is the most important thing. Um, you know, those, those premium themes come with, um, you know, pretty, pretty often updates, I would say probably every 60 days, 90 days, maybe even sooner, um, you know, and, and they should update along with the, the new iterations of WordPress. Number three, um, what are your common set or what are, what is your common core set of plugins? Um, again, here we're looking for, you know, do you have social um, plugins built in? Do you have form plugins built in? Um, you know, those are all things that, again, part of your digital marketing campaign is making it easy for your user to share to their social platforms or connect to your social platform. So it's kind of a two way there. Um, and you want to talk to and ask them about the social plugins they might run as well as the forms. Again, that's lead generation 
um, you know, having the ability to route forms that are filled out to different departments within your organization or company is important and you need to find out if they have that form capability. Number four is integration with your existing third-party application. So what you're looking for here is, you know, whether you've got a customer relationship management tool or a donation tool or a volunteer mechanism, third-party application, um, this kind of goes back to, you know, do you have, does the theme have the capability to, um, you know, insert JavaScript that would allow that third party application to run within the environment, within the website itself without having to leave uh, the site. So uh, what, what type of integrations are available? And number five, I think um, that comes along with sort of with WordPress, but just in general is mobile optimization. Uh, <clears throat> one of the real granular things that we got into in our discussion yesterday is some of the themes that are available uh, through WordPress and even through some of the premium ones, you know, for the majority, all of the top ones are going to come with, with responsive technology, meaning that, you know, if you, if you adjust the width of your browser, you can kind of envision what it looks like to go from uh, a desktop laptop to a tablet view down to a mobile phone view. And you can see how that content will adapt and shift based on the display screen size uh, of, of you know, um, the end user. But what people don't realize is that some of the themes have the ability to literally define just with a click of a button and say, you know, hide this particular section on desktops and then on the next row, turn it on so that, you know, you can have the ability to um, see that content um, on, a, um, on a very specific mobile device and orientation. So being able to toggle that on and off by content section is really, really important when you're trying to optimize. If you've got a very specific campaign and you know social is important, um, you know, having that optimized is really important. Uh, number six is hosting. What is your hosting solution? So some companies try to do their own hosting and, and acquire that separately, whether it's GoDaddy, Network Solutions, Bluehost, InMotion Hosting. Um, you know, the important thing is the larger your site is, the more robust plugins you have and premium themes you run, you're not going to be pleased with that cheap hosting for $4.99 a month or $5.99 a month you're gonna to wanna to get at least a VPS, virtual private server level, um, or at least a mid-tier hosting plan um, because these robust PHP features that you're going to want to have to have the best experience for your end users, um, you're gonna want that. So don't skimp on that and ask them, you know, what do they have? Now, in, in it also with that comes you know, do they have um, an SSL certificate, meaning is that information that's filled out in a form encrypted? And also an SSL certificate is part of Google's algorithm when, when considering whether a site should rank higher over another group because Google wants to make sure that the web is safe and encrypting your information when visiting a site and filling out a form is important to them. So asking them if they are going to provide hosting, will they include the SSL certificate as part of your hosting plan? And what type of backups do they offer? Do they have backup offer within the server environment? Here's something to consider. Many plans, GoDaddy and some of the others, they put a backup on the server on your hosting where you're at. Well, if something were to happen and, and your account would, were to be compromised, if that backup exists there, you could be in trouble. So. One of the things you might want to say is, do you offer an off-site or off-server redundancy, like a backup on Amazon? This is something that we began about two years ago, um, setting up our redundancy backups on a completely separate cloud environment so that in a worst case scenario, we have a, a business continuity plan that should something happen at that server account, we've got a backup at a different location. Uh, number seven is, do they um, or are they familiar with ADA compliance issues? Um, 
And, and this is becoming more and more uh, important as we see uh, in 2018, over 181% increase in ADA website compliance lawsuits that were brought against um, different companies and associations, um, you know, primarily in two states, New York and Florida. Uh, and, and really it boils down to if you provide public access uh, to your business, so if people can literally walk in the door, buy goods, buy services, you need to be keenly aware if your website has ADA compliant uh, capability. So there are lots of options when it comes to that. Again, going back to WordPress, there are some free plugins that can get you some basic level stuff there. Um, there are some other third party applications that can run on top of it. Uh, so you wanna ask what type of ADA compliance um, measures can they offer? Uh, and, and beyond just laying on top of, uh, of your site or running behind your site, um, educating yourself, if you're gonna do the publishing of the content and updating of the content yourself, it's really important that you understand and think about uh, persons with disabilities because if you're uploading a document that you scanned or took a photo of and converted to a PDF, that's not gonna convert. That's not gonna be readable by an accessible uh, software for someone who has disabilities. So you just need to be aware of it. So it's kind of a, a dual part of, you know, having the right tools to run, but then also being aware as you're publishing content of how that could impact uh, and potentially put your company uh, in, in, a, in a risk of liability based on the content that you're publishing. Um, number eight is I wanna talk, dive a little bit closer into lead generation because I think it's really important. We talked about a minute ago, um, asking the, the company what kind of lead generation they have. Um, but really, what, what I'm talking about is beyond that, and that really is a CRM system. Do they have some type of integration with a customer relationship management that's running inside of your website environment? Can your website talk to uh, your CRM? You know, one of the products that we like to use and integrate is Civi CRM, and it's a powerful customer relationship tool doesn't matter if you're running a Boy Scout organization or a 3,000 member association, it has the power and the ability to run complex queries, build relationships from, you know, mentor to student or from manager to associate. Um, and being able to have that integration within, within the dashboard of a single logon really does streamline your operation. So, uh, I think number eight would be uh, lead generation or, if you will, CRM integration with your content management system. Those are just sort of the, the, the big sort of eight questions, I think. Again, just to recap, um, number one, WordPress, is that the platform you're going to use? Do you have a drag and drop theme? Number two. Uh, number three, what kind of plugins are you going to run? Number four, what type of integration do you offer? Number five, is it mobile? Is it mobile friendly? Is it mobile optimized? Do you have you know, really granular settings for that? Uh, number six, what type of hosting environment do you offer? Uh, you know, with security and backups, you know, can, can you speak to those specific things? Number seven, uh, what type of things can you offer in terms of ADA compliance to ensure that we don't find ourselves in a lawsuit um, by not providing the best experience for a person with disabilities. And number eight, lead generation, integration of a CRM system or customer relationship system within the content management system of the website. Guys, thank you so much. I hope you've had a great week. Um, normally on Fridays, we do the traction series, but um, Miss Katie Lilly uh, had an uh, unforeseen thing kind of pop up and was not be able to join, but we will be back next week, next Friday uh, for Traction. So tune in for that. Guys, thank you so much. My name is Michael Wynn. I am the Chief Digital Officer of Digital Ops, a division of RV Oppenheim Associates. Have a great weekend. We'll catch you guys on Monday.